Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to talk about kind of the mindset that we want to be in as men going into marriage and some of the things that I wish I would have done better right off the bat, but it's something that God taught me over time and he's really kind of changed and molded me to be more this way. And so I want to share this with you guys, especially men, if you're you know considering marriage right now or you're looking for a spouse this is what the Bible calls us to be as men, biblically, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to being a husband, and this is what's going to lead you into success in your marriage. So I want to read Ephesians 5, verse 25, which says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. You know, when we talk about Christ loving the church, that is a deep selfless, sacrificial kind of love. And so later on in Ephesians 5, it talks about it in verse 28 and again in verse 33. It actually repeats itself. And so it says, In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. And then again in verse 33, it says, However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife must respect her husband. So what does loving your wife as yourself look like? Now in Mark 10, it talks about how Christ came to serve and not be served. And that's an attitude that I've tried to take into my workplace. And that's an attitude that I've tried to take into my marriage also. And I was listening to a pastor preach the other day. And I want to quote exactly what he said because I thought it was so good. So he said, as a husband, you have the right to go to work every day, come home exhausted, and then your day has just begun. You have the right to serve the needs of your family and go to bed more tired than anyone else. You know, often as men or as husbands, you know, if you're working and maybe your wife is not working or maybe she's home taking care of the kids, which by the way is a full-time, if not two-time full-time job is taking care of kids at home. But oftentimes we can expect to come home and just be served, right? Or on our days off, just be served and kind of be taken care of. Now that is the completely wrong attitude to have. And I love what he talks about in that quote where he says, you have the right to go to bed more tired than everyone else. And when you come home from your work day, your day has just begun, right? Your job is to now serve your wife and to serve your family. And you gotta understand too that even though you may be working, your wife may be at home, taking care of the kids, whatever, she's just as tired as you are, if not more tired, right? I know because I have a one-year-old that when I'm home and I'm taking care of him, it is exhausting, right? It is a lot of work. And for my wife to do that every single day without my help there is a lot, right? And it's a lot when we're both here and we're taking care of him. But without me there, that's a full-time job in and of itself. So as a husband, right, and as the image of Christ in that relationship, right? The Bible talks about how the husband is like Christ and the wife is like the church, right? Well, Christ came to serve and he came to sacrifice for the church, right? And the church loves Christ because Christ sacrificed and served us first, right? It wasn't the other way around. Christ came and died for our sins and he sacrificed for us and he was beaten and bloodied and bruised for us. And that's what causes us to love him, right? That's what causes us to want to serve him. And I guarantee as a man, if you serve your wife self-sacrificially, right? If you put her needs above your own, if you put her desires above your own, if you put your own comforts and your time and resources to her above your own, that will cause her to love you more. That will cause her to respect you more. And that will lead her to want to serve you. And I know the Bible talks about how the head or the husband is the head of the wife, right? And wives submit to your husbands and amen, right? But that only applies if your husband is being led by the Spirit. If you were a man being led by the Spirit and your wife sees that, she's going to want to follow you. She's going to want to let you lead and she's going to respect you. Also, treating her with kindness and respect in disagreements, right? Even when she's wrong, right? Every marriage has problems. Every marriage is going to have disagreements. But as the husband, it's the way you lead through those disagreements and arguments that really matters, right? Proverbs 15 verse one says, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So being like Christ in a marriage means to use your words to heal and not to hurt, right? You can tear someone down and you can build someone up. And a lot of times when you're arguing, right? Emotions flare up, you start saying things that you don't really mean, or you start trying to take little jabs that 
you know is gonna make the person upset or hurt them because you're hurt yourself, right? It's just a natural kind of defense mechanism and that's not of God, right? That is not of God. In an argument, husband or wife, right? Let's say your husband or wife, they just go up to a 10, right? On the anger scale, they're just all the way up here to 10 and it starts to get you bothered and annoyed and heated and you're going up there too. As a husband, right? And not just as a husband, okay? As any husband or wife, okay? But I'm talking to the husbands today. As a husband, your job is if she's at a 10 and you're at like a 10 or eight or nine, your job is to come back down to a one, right? Come back down to a one. And someone once told me before I got married that the number one reason for divorce is pride, right? That is the number one reason for divorce is pride. And if you can kill your pride, especially in an argument, you will succeed in marriage, right? You will succeed. Pride is the killer of marriage. And so when your spouse goes up to a 10 and your wife goes up to a 10, you need to look and say, you know what? Even though I may be right right now, you may be wrong, right? But even though I may be right right now, what's really important is that I love my wife and we need to come back to a place of love and we need to be able to talk in a way that is constructive and that is going to heal and help our marriage and build our marriage up and to strengthen our relationship instead of continuing to tear it down, right? And I guarantee if you start being gentle with your words, if you apologize Right, if you take responsibility for where you've gone wrong in the argument, you know, a lot of times I'll be like, hey, you know what, babe? I'm sorry for the way I'm talking to you right now. I'm sorry for this thing that I just said. I said that wasn't right. right? That wasn't okay of me. That wasn't godly. And I apologize. I said, let's come back to a place of love. Let's come back to a place where we can communicate effectively. And let's work through this problem. Because I do love you. I do want to work things out. And I do want to have a strong, healthy relationship. I guarantee if you start doing those things and kill your pride, get that pride out of there, admit when you're wrong, your wife or your spouse will hopefully meet you there too, right? And even if they don't meet you there right away, you continue to just kill them with kindness, right? That gentle word turns down wrath, okay? Continue to use those gentle words and it'll bring her down eventually or him down eventually. Lastly, consider her needs above your own, right? Whether those needs be financial needs, right? Making sure that, Whatever it is that she needs or she desires, you're taking care of those needs. And I'm not talking about just like all materialistic needs, right? If your wife wants to go on a shopping spree every single week, that's not what I'm talking about here, right? But if there's essential things that you know your wife needs or that could better her life or help her and you're buying yourself a bunch of stuff instead, that's just selfish, right? You're not putting your needs or her needs above your own, okay? So financially, you need to put her needs above your own. Take care of her first. Okay, next is emotionally. Sometimes as men, we can be very like dry emotionally or kind of cut off emotionally. And women are not that way all the time. Sometimes they are, but women are not that way all the time, right? They need a lot of reassurance. They need a lot of comfort. They need a lot of tenderness. They need a lot of affection. They need a lot of romance, right? And if you are not naturally this way, you can learn, right? You can learn. There's things that I've had to learn in our marriage. I'm continuing to learn. And all these things that I've talked about, right? These are all lessons that I've learned. Some of the things that were really good at, some of the things I was not so good at and I had to learn, right? But you need to know what the needs of your wife are on an emotional level, on a spiritual level, on a assurance or safety or financial level. And you need to take care of those, right? That's why God has put you in charge of your household is to take care of your family and provide for them and lead them. Now I want to go back to Ephesians 5, 33, because as I was reading this, it pointed out not only what the wife needs and what the woman needs, but also what the man needs. So again, verse 33 says, however, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband. Now, as a man, as a husband, we all desire respect. Okay. I know I definitely desire respect. I've talked to a lot of other men who Respect is extremely important to them, not only from their wife, but from people in the workplace, whoever, right? But as men, we need respect. And as a wife, we need your respect, right? Especially, it means a lot to us that you show us respect and we know that you do respect us. But men, let me tell you right now, if you are not living in a way that warrants her respect, she does not have to give it to you, right? She does not have to give it to you. Does she need to love you unconditionally like Christ? Yes, absolutely. Does she need to treat you with kindness and respect? Absolutely. She needs to treat you with those things, right? That's biblical. But as a man, your job is to earn her respect by living a spirit-filled life and being led by the spirit. And I promise you, if you are led by the spirit and you're living in this way, 
where you were putting her needs above your own, if you were loving her as if it was your own body, right? Loving her as if it was you that you were loving yourself, okay? Because I know a lot of us, especially as humans, we put our own needs first. We're selfish, right? We're super selfish. We're prideful. And if you can get away from that mindset of selfishness and pride and put her first and her needs first as if it were you, she will respect you. Guarantee she will respect you. It's extremely hard for someone to act that way and not be respected. Okay, so this is just some things that God was putting on my heart now for a while that I really wanted to share with you guys. And so men, if you're considering marriage or if you were already married and you're looking to improve your marriage or wondering where maybe you're falling short, this is a good place to start. Yeah, I love you guys. Praying for you. Continue to pray for me. We'll see you guys next time.